I think this is the ninth week of our new reality with uh, physical distancing, staying home, uh, ver- start very slow reopening of the economy. I think as of today, more retail stores are open for curbside service, but people are still nervous. Dr. Vandermill jo- joins us right now. Good morning. Good morning, Lisa. So what, take me through the past week. I mean, it still seems to be a very, very slow um, uh, number of, very, very low number of people being testing positive. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it seemed like a, a good week that way. It, it, it seemed like most days, uh, there was a number of days where we did not receive any positive reports. And on the days that we did, it was really just one report. I, I didn't count them up at this point, but it, it, we definitely had, I think, our best week since the beginning of this, and you know, eight to nine weeks ago, as you said. And, um, you know, it, it, these are individuals where, you know, we weren't surprised, again, the, the sort of individuals who are close contacts of previous cases. So uh, we're not necessarily surprised that they're, that they're positive. So definitely a very good pattern. Um, I'm always... Uh, you know, I, I don't want to jump to any big conclusions because things can change obviously very quickly, but it does seem to show, uh, you know, a, a trend towards definitely slowing down for us here and uh, uh, getting, getting better for sure. I think we all held our breath when we heard about the outbreak at Ho- Hogarth, but that's uh, o- only one person so far, I mean, because that had the potential to be awful. Yeah. You know, and we, and of course, like we've heard about um, outbreaks in other places, and I indicated, as we talked about last week, you know, a very low threshold to to declare an outbreak, so that you're mm-hmm. on it right away. And uh, uh, and certainly, St. Joe's, who who runs uh, HRM and ourselves, we were we were on it, working together on that, and uh, a, a number of additional people, both staff and residents, were tested. It's just a low threshold again for testing, and I think there was a. a a couple of days ago, there was like 60 additional tests done, and they're all negative. So, um, and then again, of course, there's real um, vigilance around anybody who has any symptoms, whether it's staff or um, residents. I mean, that's at HRM certainly uh, right now, but at all long-term care homes, just a real low threshold to testing. So we pick it up early, and I really. You know, I'm so this one is is turning out, you know, well. I mean, we're still uh, there's still an outbreak, and we it, it I think it takes at least another seven days um, of careful monitoring with no new cases uh, before we declare it over. But um, you know, it certainly it turned out to, you know as better as best as it could have really at least as what we're seeing right now. Mm-hmm. And I really mm-hmm. I really do think all the measures that have been put in place, um, you know, directed by the province or even things that were done provincially that sort of supported the work we do locally with various partners, I think really puts us in a, in a good position. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic uh, in terms of our work with long-term care homes that, uh, you know, they, they've already put tremendous um, uh, measures in place to prevent, uh, you know, those really bad situations from happening here, and uh, we continue to work with them. So, you know, do I think we're going to avoid another one? No, I think we'll probably have outbreaks, but we'll hope to keep them, um, you know, fairly small uh, in scope, mm-hmm. hopefully. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What well, about the level of testing that, that you're doing? Are you comfortable with that? Because the Premier kind of suggested last night, last week, that huh. not enough testing is being done. Yeah, so the the Premier sort of, uh, yeah, made some, uh, I think that was last Monday, some pretty uncomfortable comments about testing. But if you look at the trend of, in testing over that, that full week, I think that was sort of a low point was on Monday, and there was a definitely uh, lots of uh, additional testing being done, uh, even to the point that we, we got something over the weekend that the, a notice that the sort of the lab is, is a bit backlogged right now. There's so many tests in the system. But, uh, I, yeah, I, I think uh, he was perhaps looking at a, at a lower day, and we've certainly stepped up. And uh, we continue to do a lot of tests here. We've now done up to – it's almost 6,000 tests since the beginning. We definitely ramped up uh, a number of weeks ago. Actually, I think it was about a month ago now when the, the Premier kind of directed, uh, you know, increased testing and, and the, mm-hmm. the lab could mm-hmm. accommodate it. So um, I, what I think what I'm looking for now is – 
you know, we've been doing a lot of testing in order to find cases, right? Um, now I, I, I'm hope when we're expecting to hear a bit more direction from the province soon uh, around what does what does testing look like now that we're you know. Um, Maybe the first wave, we're, we're kind of at the, at the end of the first wave of this pandemic, and we're going into a place where we're going to start reopening, and we need yeah. to really have vigilance and really sort of uh, testing to, to really monitor what's happening, uh, particularly in vulnerable, vulnerable groups, so that we can pick up something earlier. And I'm even wondering, you know, about whether they're going to be doing those zero prevalence studies as part of this, you know, looking at um, blood testing of a sample of the population to know what level of, of immunity or what level of exposure we've already had. All of those will really inform, um, you know, the, the, our, our next step in terms of testing and what we're going to do. There's so much we don't know and so much we're learning. You know what? I I I I'm, I'm just keep coming back to the fact that we first heard about this virus on December 31st of 2019, and mm-hmm. when I think of the Im- immense amount of stuff that's happened in that time, and of course, really feeling the implications of all that here, it, it's quite amazing to me. But I do think there there and really there has been a tremendous amount of work in understanding. Um, you know this virus and its transmission and how 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 things happen right in in real life and and what we could do about it um and i so i really look forward to that continuing because i think that's all going to be very helpful and even in a month from now or two months from now we won't be in the same situation we you know we'll know even more uh and we're not doing this alone obviously this is uh True. something that's happening all across the world and there's there's research and investigations and you know, we learn from each other. I mean, sometimes we learn the hard way, but, uh, you know, we're going to keep using that to uh, to inform what we're doing to really optimize uh, the, the outcome here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, so today with the sl- slow reopening, the curbside retail, I mean, uh, have you been working with companies to let them know what they have to do? Yeah, so I, I, there's actually a lot of uh, work. I mean, it's been done at the, the government level. Like, all of the ministries are, are involved, really, in supporting uh, the sectors under their purview, right, uh, about guidance. I know there's stuff that's done nationally. Uh, Patty Heidi actually um, um, noted something um, at something the Canadian Centre for Occupational Health uh, and Safety, where there's sort of guidance for different sectors. And, and so it's not just sort of the work of public health or us, uh, that's putting out that guidance, and I, I've looked at some of them, and I'm, it, it's quite good. You know, really, really looking at how how workplaces and, and different sectors can continue to operate, but looking really differently, right? Uh, yeah. And sometimes outside the box thinking, and and I and I, when I even just uh, just doing my own business, whether it's going to the grocery store around here, and I, I see the what people have already put in place. You know, you could still get what you need done, but uh, uh, there's extra measures put in place to help us maintain that physical distance, which is so important. And yes, we at the Health Unit, we've uh, we do support some of that, and and we do, you know, if people are if an organization or something, uh, an, uh, a store, for example, is struggling, we can support them. Um, and you know, sometimes it comes through the route of we get a complaint from somebody, uh, and then that co- you know our public health inspectors will follow up with that particular place and uh, support them, and in, in, you know, in instituting or managing the kind of challenges that they may be experiencing to do that. So we we will continue to do a lot of that work. Stay safe, Dr. DeMille. Thank you again for your time. Really appreciate it. Nice talking to you. Right. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.